All right, so we did the initial setup and now let's see how we can have some translations in our website. The first thing I want to do here in our markup, just create a simple navigation. So I will have a nav tag with eight tags within it that says home, for example, and about, and then I'm just going to add some styles very quickly to our header and navigation. All right, so these are the CSS classes I just added for this component, very simple. And this is what we have on our page. I also changed the CSS in our main.js to base.css instead of main, because I don't want to use that and the classes within that main.css. So we are using base.css in our main.js and some simple CSS in our app component. So now back to our main.js, let's talk about the options we can provide for this create method. We already talked about legacy, which is used for composition API. Then we can set the default locale using the locale property. And we can say, for example, EN for English or JP for Japanese or ES for Spanish and so on. So I will set the default locale to English and we can also provide the country. So if I say US here after a dash, that means English, United States, or we could set it to any other country. We can also have a fallback locale, which would come in if there is no translation for the specific locale we want to choose. So for example, if we have a Japanese translation and for a certain text, there is no translation, then this fallback locale will come in. And this one also, we will set it to English US. So these are the very first ones we need to set in our create method. The next step is to actually provide the translations. And for that, we can use the messages property. This will take an object with all the translations we want to provide. For example, we want English US, which again, it needs to be an object. And let's say Spanish, Spain, and let's have another one, which I will use Japanese. And some of these are from the documentation and I will just use those. So now we provided these options. Let's go back to view DevTools and take a look at what we have here. So I'm just gonna reload this. You notice we have locale set to English US, also the fallback and under available locales, which is an array, we have the translations we provided here. Now in these objects, we can have our actual texts. So let's just start with this text hello we have here. First, we need to decide which key we want to use and I will call this greet and the text in English should be hello. Then I'm going to copy this, paste it here and also here for Japanese and just change the values. So the keys must be the same here and the values are different. Now I don't speak any other language, but I believe hello in Spanish is hola and in Japanese, I can just grab it from documentation which is this one and paste it here. So now we have our languages and a key value pair in each object. Let's use this in our app component. So again, since we are using a script setup, first we want to import use i18n from that plugin. And then from that use i18 function, we want to extract a method. And this one is called T for translation. So we want to set this to use i18n and then invoke it. So this T method allows us to use these messages or translations we have in our i18 plugin. And we can use that in our markup just like any other dynamic value we want to use in Vue.js. So instead of this hello text, which is hard coded, we can have double curly brackets. Then we want to use this T, which is a method, and it is looking for a key. And that needs to be a string. The key here we are using is greet. So we can just pass greet here and save it. That's it. Now back to our website, we have the text hello here. But if we go back to main.js and change the locale to Japanese, for example, and go back to the website, now the text is Japanese. And that's how easy it is just to provide different translations and show the right content based on the locale of the user. Now, this was a very simple example, and we will dig deeper into messages and translations. But before that, let's have a drop down menu here so we can easily change the locale or the language from our website. And we can find this under composition API in the documentation. We have this locale changing, which allows us to either change the global scope of our locale or locally change that if we want different languages in different components. So we are going to change this globally. We need to extract the locale from use i18. So let's do that first in our app.view. We already have T. Let's also grab the locale and I'm just going to first show that on the screen to see what we have. 
So you notice here we have JA-JP. So that is our locale and we just have to change that dynamically. Now, since we want to change the global locale of the whole website, we can pass an options here and say use a scope and set this to global. Now, if we go back to the documentation, we have this select element and then options within it. So let's copy this and paste it in the navigation. And I will use a div first and then paste that select option. So we are setting the V model of this select to this locale. And since this is a reactive property, we can use the V model and change it based on these options. Now, I don't want to hard code the options one by one. We already know we have an array right here that says available locales, and we can use that to loop over that and show an option for each language or locale. First, let's extract that from use i18, just like with the rest of these functions or properties and delete one of these options, just keep one of them and then use the v4 on the option element. We want to say for each locale in available locales, set the value to that locale, whatever that locale is, the text or the content of this option should also be that locale, which is this one. And we need to provide the key since we have a loop here. So for the key, I can use backticks and say locale a dash locale like this. And this is an example from the documentation and I'm just duplicating it for our composition API. Now, before going to the website, let me just add some more classes to this nav. So I'm just going to set the display to flex, justify content space between, and also wrap those A tags with a div. So we have two divs now. One is for the drop down menu, one for the links, and back to our website. Here is our drop down menu. And I just set the text to two rem so it's easier to see. Anyway, now we have our locale changing right here, and it shows Japanese right now. If we select English, we have English. If we select Spanish, then it is changed to a Spanish. So that's the basic of showing translation and also how to change the locale dynamically in our website. In the next video, we want to dig deeper and see what more we can do with these translations.